Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Kubernetes series. First and foremost, I would like to wish you a happy new year and thank you for being here with me in this new video. And I would like to mention that today we're going to talk about ingresses in Kubernetes, basically discussing about what they are, what their purpose is and how we can use them following up with a demo. If this sounds fun, as usual, let's jump straight into business. Before jumping headfirst into ingresses, we need to understand some other concepts. And the first one is controllers. We've spoken about controller manager in the initial video regarding Kubernetes architecture. And basically that's a manager of controllers. Yeah. And if you want to have controllers simplified, think about the controller like the process which takes into account and supervises all objects of the same type. And what I mean by that is Kubernetes by default gets shipped with certain controllers such as pod controller, service controller, endpoints controller, and so on. So basically when you create an object of one of these types, let's say when you create a pod, the pod controller will take that object into account and it will manage its life cycle. Okay. And why I want to mention controllers first is because in Kubernetes, there is no ingress controller, or at least it's not shipped by default as part of the controller manager. So if you want your ingress objects to work, you need to deploy your own ingress controller into your Kubernetes cluster first. Okay, this is a prerequisite. And this is why I started with it. So again, reiterating, you want ingress objects to function, you need an ingress controller the ingress controller doesn't get shipped by default with Kubernetes. So you need to deploy your own ingress controller. Now that we got controllers out of the way and we understand their purpose, let's talk about the subject of this video, which is ingresses. And as you can see on the slide, ingresses are Kubernetes objects, which are tasked to manage traffic coming into the cluster. Okay. So ingress internal traffic, traffic that comes inside of the cluster. And as you can see there, the typical protocol is HTTP. Now, there's a lot of cool features that come with ingresses, and you can see some of them on the slide in front of you, but I want to make something very, very clear. Okay. So ingresses, you see here on the slide HTTP. If you remember in the Kubernetes services episode, we discussed about services and some of you may already be wondering, well, what's the difference between an ingress and a service? Now service is like a software load balancer, which brings traffic into pods. The ingress, however, is supposed to be layer seven. Okay. If we're talking about the OSI stack, uh, because it's HTTP, yeah, it's application layer, it's layer seven. So ingresses are layer seven, while services are most commonly TCP or UDP. So these are layer four on the OSI stack. Okay, so there's a difference even here, ingresses layer seven, services layer four. But as you know, you can have services of type load balancer, which basically means that you can bring traffic inside of your cluster through a service. But if you want to leverage path based routing, if you want to leverage header management, yeah, you can only do that using ingresses. So ingresses are more application specific, they are layer seven, and they have a lot of functionality regarding layer seven capabilities. This is a diagram of how ingresses look. And as you can see here, and as I mentioned, just a few moments ago, services plug into the pods, but ingresses, they route traffic to a specific service. As a best practice in Kubernetes, you would want your services inside of the cluster and not exactly exposed to the outside. And then you would have the ingress route, which takes traffic from outside of the cluster and brings it into the service. And then the service load balances to certain pod replicas. Now, this is how a basic ingress object YAML would look like. And as you can see, it has the four fields, API version, kind, metadata, and spec, like most of the other objects we talked about previously. 
What I want to focus on right now are two of them, uh, the ingress class name, which we're going to talk about in just a few moments, and also the rules part, okay? So in the rules part, you see we have an HTTP rule, which tells us if you access slash test path in the URL, you will be redirected to the service with the name test on port 80. This is how the plugin between ingress and service is going to be done for us. I just mentioned that ingress classes are quite important and allow me to explain why. So far we talked about two notions, two important notions, the ingress controller and the ingress itself. Now the ingress controller, you can think about it like, a, <coughs> sorry, like a layer seven load balancer, which takes traffic from outside of the cluster and brings it inside of the cluster. And then the ingress object itself is the rule based on which this traffic will be redirected to one of the services and will eventually reach a pod inside of the cluster. But then the question rises, how does the ingress controller know what ingresses to take care of? Because you can have more than one ingress controller in your cluster. And this is where ingress classes come into play, okay? The ingress class is like a super glue between ingresses and ingress controllers. Okay, the ingress class will reference the ingress controller by name. And in the ingress object, you need the ingress class name field here to be populated, which references the ingress class name, which is the ingress controller name. So the ingress class is like a flexible connection between the ingress and the ingress controller, and is an object which you also need to define in Kubernetes. I know it might be a lot of information and it might not make a lot of sense right now, but bear with me until the demo. I promise it will make sense then. This is how an ingress class YAML manifest looks like. As you can see, you reference a controller here in the spec and the name of the ingress class has to match the name of the ingress controller. That's basically it. Okay, it's, it's not a very fancy object. The final point I want to make jumping into the demo is presenting different types of ingresses that we might use throughout our interaction with Kubernetes. The first one, as you can see here, is the one backed by a single service. So you declare an ingress and its default backend is one service. Okay, so when you access the ingress controller, it takes you straight to that backend service. Other flavors of ingresses might include the simple fanout, which basically says that the client will access the load balancer of the ingress controller. And if you go in your browser to slash foo at the end of the IP or the URL, yeah, so you go somewhere slash foo, it will redirect you to service number one. But if you go to the same host name, but slash bar, it will redirect you to the second service. Okay, so it's like a path-based routing. The final type of ingress we're going to talk about today is the name-based virtual hosting. And this one implies that you either have integration with the DNS zone with some DNS records set up previous, some DNS records set up beforehand, or you trick the host header into believing you're actually coming from that host. Okay, and what I mean by that is you will have a record, for example, as it says here, foo.bar.com. And when you try to access this host in your browser, it will redirect you into service one. But if you change the domain, uh, bar.foo.com, it will redirect you to the second service. Okay, we got to the moment everyone has been waiting for, which is the demo. In this demo, we will be playing with an ingress object of type fanout, and we will be ignoring the single service backed one because it's too simplistic. And we will also be ignoring the name based virtual hosting because that also requires some DNS configuration and it's out of the scope of this video. So we're only going to use the fanout configuration to describe and exemplify how an ingress object should be working. If you want to follow along on this demo, you can by going into the 07 underscore ingress folder in my GitHub account, which will be linked down below and choose to use those YAML manifests to understand ingress controllers. Okay. 
The first thing we need to do is open readme.md and in here we have clear instructions on how to install the ingress controller. In our case, we're going to use the ingress minus nginx. So it's an ingress controller coming from nginx and it's my preferred one to use. And in our case, let's do kubectl uh, get nodes to see that the cluster got deployed. And it did almost five minutes ago, so that's amazing. And what we need to do here is run some Helm commands. Don't worry, we'll learn about Helm in just a few videos. But for the time being, all you need to know is that I'm using a sort of Kubernetes package manager to install this ingress controller. So let's say instead of release name, I'm going to say controller. There we go. We have an ingress controller deployed. Okay, so what is this ingress controller, you might wonder? Well, it's pretty simple. If you do kubectl get pod, you will see that we have a pod. If we look at services, you see that we also have a controller nginx load balancer type service. Okay, so an ingress controller is actually a combination in this case for nginx, for the nginx ingress controller. The ingress controller is a combination of a service and a pod. Okay, and the service is backed by an Azure load balancer because we've deployed this into AKS. Yeah, we deployed this into Azure Kubernetes service. So basically we have a load balancer with a public IP in front of it. And you can see the public IP here is referenced. So if I open this one in the browser, it will take us to the default Nginx page of 404 not found because I don't have any ingress root created here for this IP address. But IP address, public IP address, load balancer, this load balancer has a service inside of Kubernetes and this service points to this pod right here, which processes the request, uh, looks at the header on the request and based on those headers, um, references them against the ingress objects that we have, basically the routing rules. Yeah, and these are, these are the ingress objects, the routing rules and decides to which service should it forward the traffic. Okay, that's what I wanted to point out. If you try to list the objects, you will always figure out how Kubernetes is working. Okay, you just need to dive a little bit into the whole infrastructure. <clears throat> now that you know that we have a service and a pod, let's put them to good use. Okay, and let's create, let's create the pod first. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a service, nothing fancy. Uh, it exposes port 80. And we have an Nginx pod, which will show us the default Nginx welcoming page, okay? So if I copy this and I do kubectl apply minus F, there we go, we created it. So, Now, as you can see, we have a new service which exists for 11 seconds and it's called the nginx minus service. It's the one that we just created. Okay. And if I wanted to open it in the browser, I would first need to have it publicly exposed, which it isn't. It's a service of type cluster IP. So it only has a private IP. I cannot access it right now. But if I wanted to access the nginx pod that I just deployed through the service, even though it's cluster IP, I could use the kubectl port forward command, which is very good for debugging. And in our case, it's now working. So basically, if I hit localhost on port 8083, let's copy this. Let's see what happens. There we go. Welcome to Nginx. And now we can see the Nginx web page served by our pod. Okay. But again, it's not tied to this IP address. Okay. This is still 404 not found, but I want to make it available through my ingress controller. And in order to do this, I need to create an ingress rule. 
Okay, so you can see here I have ingress.yaml. I can stop the port forward. And let's analyze the ingress a bit. So it says here that uh, single service ingress. Okay, exactly what we want to achieve. So this is a proper name. We have an annotation here which says um, nginx ingress kubernetes.io rewrite target slash. And I will explain what this means in just one moment. Uh, the ingress class name is nginx. And you might notice that I have not created an ingress class myself, but if we do kubectl get ingress class, you will see that one exists because it was created by default with the ingress controller. Okay, so sometimes you might not need to create the ingress class on your own. It gets created with the ingress controller if you use, as in my case, a Helm chart, which is a package manager for Kubernetes, but you will still need to reference the ingress class name, okay, which needs to match this. Yeah, nginx matches nginx, so we're cool, okay? And in terms of routing, yeah, the rule that we have is when I access slash nginx on my IP address, I will be taken to the nginx service. So let's deploy this and see if it works. Uh, copy path, kubectl apply minus f, and we created an ingress object. Okay, now let's test it. If I refresh the page here, it will obviously not work because as I said, I want to have slash nginx here. And now it's working. Yeah, it redirected me to the service, which in turn redirected me to the pod. Okay, so now let's explain what I meant by rewrite target. So if I comment this annotation, let's try to do that. And let's see what happens. There we go. Now it's not working anymore. Okay, and let me try to explain what this annotation does. So basically, when I access my browser, I say that I want the resource from slash nginx. Okay, and then this slash nginx is actually part of the ingress route. Okay, it's slash nginx here. But my web page, which I want to see, as you can see here, yeah, when I was port forwarding, I was actually hitting the slash. Okay, so the pod, the nginx pod I'm trying to access, which presents this welcome page, is actually presenting the welcome page from the root, from slash. But due to my nginx rule, I'm not using slash, I'm using slash nginx which means these two will mismatch. Yeah, slash nginx does not equal slash. So I send this request to the pod and the pod will say 404 not found. In order to bypass this situation, I need this annotation here, which basically says, even though you tell the ingress route that you want to access slash nginx, this slash nginx will only exist in the context of the ingress object. But when we go to the target, to the backend target, I will rewrite this path of slash nginx to the backend's slash. Okay, and this is exactly what I want to achieve. I want to access slash from the backend, but I will do it by accessing slash nginx in the ingress rule. Okay, I hope this makes sense. If not, please read more about this annotation. It's just a gateway. And this is very important for a number of reasons. You manage to decouple where your backend will be served from how you call it in the ingress. And this is it for today, guys. I really hope I was able to demystify ingress controllers, ingresses for you and make you understand how to use these objects in order to leverage bringing traffic from outside of the cluster into your cluster and into your services in a secure manner and in a way which may benefit your organization. Obviously, these are just entry level examples. Uh, there's a lot more power that you can get from harnessing ingress objects. 
you just have to read the documentation and practice on your own. Okay, so this is just an intro. Don't have the expectation here that you will see production grade ingress objects and ingress controllers, but this is just helping you to get started with these powerful objects. Thank you very much for giving me your time of the day and I wish you a great day ahead wherever you are. Cheers.